Good evening, everyone. Thank you so much for joining in today. This is our last but one uh, uh, talk today. And, uh, uh, you know, we've had a series of experts speak. Today we have a very special expert, Kamal Pandit. Um, I'm very grateful to him uh, that he agreed uh, to uh, come and deliver a talk to us in his busy schedule. Um, uh, Mr. Pandit is the head of design of Godrej Appliances and um, uh, he has a, a, a very interesting uh, story and journey. Uh, perhaps I will leave it up to him to explain how, you know, how his journey in design has been. And uh, I would request him to uh, uh, take, uh, take the stage and, you know, uh, present to us. Yes, Mr. Pandit, please. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Adi. Yes. Uh, thanks, MIT team, for giving me this opportunity to connect with the young minds. And today's presentation is nothing rocket science. Maybe you must have seen these things before in different form. But I was wondering as to what should I talk about, and finally zero down, zeroed down on the fact that. Uh, one learn few things over the course of professional interaction. So I have tried to attack them and put some principles, maybe guiding force, uh, maybe some preaching. I don't know, whatever you would like to interpret, you can. But these are my uh, learning over the period of uh, 20, 21 years of uh, design profession. So mm. yeah, I'll take the liberty to start the and um, i have tried uh, to uh, to uh, talk a little bit as to how this learning can be important in the design profession so uh, if anybody has a question they can either raise the query right after that principle which we have spoken about or maybe at the end also i'll be okay to take up any queries you might have so I am Kamal Pandit. I head industrial design at Godrej Appliances. Uh, before this, uh, I was heading VIP Industries, uh, luggage design uh, field. And prior to that, uh, uh, initially I had a consultancy for around five, five and a half years. Then I went on board LG Electronics. I was with LG Electronics for 13 years. So I started as refrigerator designer. I headed their home appliance vertical for quite some time. And then I was also assigned to establish design research and strategy function, which was my last responsibility with LG Electronics. So yeah, that's how the professional journey has been. So when we talk about a designer in a professional field, they may either choose to, to teach or maybe practice as a designer themselves. And when we talk about practicing design, maybe uh, there'll be two, two ways to do it. You become a entrepreneur, a consultant, a freelance designer, or maybe you can choose a corporate world. Now, since uh, I had uh, this interaction as, as entrepreneur, uh, a consultant, a freelancer as well, and also, have a long exposure to the corporate world. So I thought of bridging this gap between two different ways of handling design profession. So going forward, if we look at uh, with, with design consultancy, uh, usually it is uh, business is design. So design perhaps at some point in time takes a backseat and commercial benefits supersedes of course you you do try and do as best as you can in terms of design output innovation but again because you need to keep ball rolling the churning out the money so commercial aspect is something which takes the front seat uh, secondly uh, there was one other lesson which came hard way which was uh, client wishes primary so with design cons uh, you being a design consultant you can uh, uh, warn a customer uh, maybe a couple of, couple of times, but eventually he is the buyer. He is the one who is going to pay you for services. So eventually you end up agreeing to his thought, even though it may not 
go down well as a as a designer to you and the uh, other aspect is your life or your engagement with the design project remains till the project last so thereafter uh, it becomes sort of dissociate dissociated from the from the project however in the corporate world if you see uh, design is business so uh, we are more like a designer who aid business and we don't really worry too much about business so uh, our primary focus then becomes that what kind of impact will our design solution cause on brand or uh, the drawback could be that there would be a lot of cft members cross functional team members involved so you sort of have to take a democratic route of uh, finalizing design or uh, it's more of a, a democratic and diplomatic way of putting things but here we uh, i feel we as a designer have slightly more flexibility uh, even to saying even to our business head that this may not work you should take this direction so that that slight amount of liberty comes as a corporate designer but uh, the other aspect is that when we design anything it's not just the duration of the project but year after launch maybe couple of year after launch we are answerable to that design so our association with that output is long lived as compared to design consultancy so uh, in this duration of 21 years there are some learnings which i have tried to gather and these learning are first hand experience of uh, uh, providing design service in corporate world as well as as a consultant so i'll try and summarize those in the coming slides so uh, and this is a very academic rule also expand narrow down expand and repeat this loop is very 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 critical and perhaps the most important aspects of design so uh, you basically start from a small statement you create hypotheses assumptions to expand it then you filter down narrow down again and within that narrowed version you again expand to look at the possibility and this goes on and the more you do this the better will be the design solution this i have experienced first hand uh, life so uh, typically you uh, i mean uh, you would definitely will have a much better chart in terms of design process but this is a simplistic uh, corporate version of of a process so we get a brief uh, but when you expand maybe you question the brief then you again narrow down re articulate the create concept and when i say here concept it doesn't necessarily mean design concept these are the principal design directions you might take to create your design solution so uh, this is little macro uh, and i have a example of it in the following slide then you again filter down in concept you freeze the direction and then you ideate within that direction create rendering again filter down so it's expansion narrowing expansion narrowing and that's how you at every step you evolve solution to a, a better possibility so this is an example of uh, uh, my interaction as a design researcher and a strategist with lg electronics design division so this was a project about mobile phone and we were trying to identify as to what kind of mobile phone will work for indian environment and this may not clearly show that narrowing and expansion but this chart does have that process included so we started from brief as to a uh, 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 mobile phone uh, roughly priced 20000 for indian market that's how the statement came and we expanded in terms of what all might lead a product to sell in the market and we identified some 8 10 criteria out of which we shortlisted three critical one which were durability usability and carrying carrying means physically carrying the phone around so within each parameter then we deep dive we had a, a consumer interaction we had a, a focus group discussion as well as co ideation and we identified certain sub parameter of these three parameters like what kind of 
work environment do they have? Is it a sales person or is it a person who is seated on a desk from eight to five? And likewise, so uh, following which we tried and grouped them again. So this is like expansion and then narrowing back again in terms of identifying the critical parameter within durability, within usage and within caring. So these are the pointers which are marked with red boxes. Now with this, we, uh, we tried and create certain solution. So for an instance, for a harsh usage, maybe one would want a product which looks new for longer duration. So this is another sort of expansion and narrowing as well. Plus it was again, we looked whether this new ever can meet some other requirement. So if it has to look new, it has to withstand rugged environment. Yes, it will feed that need also. It will work in hot and humid weather. So yes, it will feed in that also. So we tried to make a matrix as in one solution can address uh, different needs of different segment. So that's how, again, expansion and narrowing happens. And finally, we uh, filtered all the ideas, evaluated, and came up with this three proposal. Now, when I said concept in my first slide, it really means this. And this is not the design solution. Design project actually get triggered after this stage. So this is just an indicative design which has been presented to communicate the product concept better. But these are not the design which is treated like a final design. So it states a probable solution, but not limiting to this solution. It also states the background from where this solution has come forth and what is the final objective. So uh, if we take an example, the background is the phones are expensive, 20,000 phone for most of the people is really expensive deal. And they carry uh, in their pocket or uh, uh, it's, it's mobile with them all the time. It has tendency to fall down. It is, uh, uh, it is placed on different hard surfaces. So which makes the screen is crashed or camera lens is crashed and so on and so forth. So the solution could be, can we minimize contact area of phone? And thus evolves the final solution new ever. Uh, like in the last case, wherein it's true companion, we, we felt that women, especially the ones who wear salwar, kurta, more, and in North, uh, there is huge chunk of population which uh, wear uh, kurta, pajama mostly. So you can't really have any place or pocket to keep phone. So you carry them in, in your hand purse and uh, in public transport, you fear that it might be snatched away. It might end up ringing all duration and you might miss the phone. So there are certain other issues. So we tried and uh, resolve that kind of problem also. So with men, the issue is that if you keep it in your breast pocket, if you bend down, the phone tends to fall down, it breaks. So what can be done to address such solution? So with women back, we couldn't really identify any appropriate solution to make it uh, audible, the, the ring audible. But we did identify one issue that uh, since bag has too many other things also, it the phone get to, uh, tends to get lost in the crowd. So whether we can create some sort of a small clip or economical clip, which will secure it in pocket or in purse uh, at a specific location. So uh, this is what we used to term as product concept. And following this, there will be another user research and then uh, form factor and other parameters can be addressed. So that's how, uh, this is what I actually meant by expansion, narrowing expansion and so on and so forth. So this brings me to the end of my first principle. And I'll shoot to the next principle, which is explore possibilities uh, in a macro level and in a micro level. So when I say macro level and micro level is uh, you, uh, you, you search uh, your possibilities as an overall form, then within that form, there'll be small, small components. So you can further explore possibilities within those components. 
and thus the output which comes out remains a lot more robust so i could not find any appropriate example to be covered here because typically when you leave company you take your final renderings but process uh, i didn't have with me so i have downloaded one image from somewhere but this is an interesting image which sort of covers the way explorations are done so uh, there is one big red circle marked and there is two blue circle marked so if you see the this collage has different uh, different approaches which has been explored but within one approach also there are certain exploration which are taken over the interesting part is the left blue circle and the bottom right blue circle so you can see the the conceptually the the bag still appears the same but there is a different interpretation different proportion in which the the element can be applied so uh, that is what i mean and i sincerely uh, request young designers to don't uh, ever uh, close your design solution in your first two three sketches explore even if it's it's not going to uh, to result in any interesting option that conversation of yours with yourself will prepare you for future projects and trust me when you get on to the next stage of detailing the details are far more matured and thought of so explore as much as you can uh, at a at a macro level as well as micro level uh, this brings me to my third aspect uh, wherein uh, you should love your design but you should not marry them and i learned it very very hard way so uh, when i was in my uh, final year of design course uh, and uh, to reduce pressure on my family for money i started working part time with a ad ad agency now it so happened that one day uh, there was this one apparel shelf which i had designed then and i had recently studied a novel by ann rand called fountain head so in some sense i used to think myself as a howard rock which was which was the lead character of that that story so i went down to this person and he asked for certain changes obviously uh, i was at a different level young blood um, so i refused and i lost almost one month of uh, works payment just because of this denial so uh, so you should love your design that is for sure but don't get married to it so another example uh, from my professional history is somewhere in 2006 we had a project with lg electronics which was to design a convertible refrigerator now convertible refrigerator is refrigerator in which you can turn your freezer section to be a refrigerator section and vice versa so in this actually the ask put was that you should definitely have a space to make ice uh, so we did all sorts of study we also designed it we made a mock up of it which was presented to the management and now this ice making section was cramping the freezer section a lot and then there were challenges to meet appropriate temperature and so on so forth and lg electronics is scrapped that idea somewhere around end of two, 2006 and in 2010 samsung launches the same solution in the market uh, with the name of convertible they didn't really target to make ice so it is understood that once you turn your freezer to refrigerator section you would not have liberty to make ice and following which lg had to follow the same footpath whirlpool and godric all of us eventually followed samsung to make a convertible refrigerator so uh, now since we were married to the fact that we have to have ice making we lost opportunity of launching uh, a solution 3 year ahead which has become a big time talking point in indian market space so uh, that that brings me to the end of this topic and i come down to this jargon i was introduced to this jar jargon quite recently in vip industries but when i look back in in my history i realized that 
this remains as one of the most important parameters. So better is not the enemy of best. This is a very strong statement and uh, it also hurts at time because you aspire to create the best possible solution. But this statement states that uh, after reaching a certain amount of solution, certain amount of detailing, you should try and bring that concept forth to the forum. Now, this could be market or your in internal stakeholder. So if you keep on striving towards this, you may end up losing the opportunity of introducing a nice solution. So better is never an enemy of best. Better uh, will be followed by best. That is how it goes. So the best example which I could take was this research project we were doing uh, was to reach a 10 million mark of television set in Indian rural spaces. So this was to be designed especially for rural. And the idea was that uh, within five years, we should be uh, doing more than 10 lakh uh, TV sets in rural space only. So with this, if you see, uh, uh, there was another uh, person, a colleague of mine, very senior to me. He used to emphasize a lot on migration path. And that sensitivity, uh, when I look back, uh, turns out to be the best possible solution. So when you draw a solution, you give a better solution for today. And you also show the dream of best possibility, which might happen tomorrow. Thereby, you don't lose an opportunity to introduce the best solution. But you also maximize the opportunity of taking solution to the market much prior and in right time. So here, if you see, uh, because of technical feasibility, because of the the investments involved because of the price of the television. The, uh, we divided six solution over the span of four or five years. So this project was done in 2013. So we projected first solution to come up in 2015, one year down the line. And thereafter followed by uh, another set of solution for 2016 and 17, which was really Y plus three in a sense. So there were some interesting outcome of this project, but I won't get into it because the topic remains about the learning from the professional life. So, uh, so yeah, so better cannot be enemy of the best. And in fact, you can also interpret it other way around. Best should not be the enemy of better. So either ways, it, it boils down to the same meaning. Uh, this brings to one other aspect, which is uh, in, in professional world, you don't really at times get time to execute the project. So you typically would draw a mood board, you will identify parallel projects or similar product, and you try to bring in the flavor of the surfaces in, in, in those products directly. But the idea is not form factor. Trust me, the, the shape design is very contextual. In India, if you like A, maybe in America, people would like B. So aesthetic is very, very subjective field and it, it is largely context based. But if you can tell your stories through your design, that's where things become very, very concrete. So uh, this was one hypothetical project which we did. And the topic was about the cultural health aspect of India. So idea was to identify factors which are culturally rooted and has to do with health and can we come up with some solution around it. So what we identified that uh, water purifier has become, had already uh, prevailing in the market. There were a lot of solutions. But somehow people were not accepting air purifier as the appropriate solution. So we started this research. We spoke to some 50 odd people. We also interviewed a couple of doctors and we had a lot of interesting insight coming forth. But what we realized that by and large people didn't understand the, the criticality of a device like air purifier for two reasons. One, uh, uh, their, their elders at home are living long. There was no life-threatening factor. 
and to uh, the air purifiers available at that point in time costed anything more than 40000 which was a, a huge amount so the best best correlation consumer had in terms of air purifier was that maybe air purifier can avoid settling of dust on the furnitures or the artifacts around in the house however the air purifier are not meant to remove most of the visible dust at best they reduce pm 2.5 pm 1 and some harmful gaseous or chemical substance floating in the air so this uh, dust would still settle even if your air purifier is running all the time plus the cultural aspect of indian household is they would open the windows and door in the morning to let fresh air come in the house so the correlation of pure air is the fresh air from outside, which to a large extent is also true, interestingly. The, the air within house is much more polluted than the air outside. So uh, what we proposed was a, a purifier which does not consume floor space, one, and two, which ensure that maximum amount of dust can be eliminated. Uh, even in a smaller focused area, it's okay, but it should, it should show the tangibility of removal of the dust. So that's when we conceptualized this personal air purifier. This was targeted to be uh, costing us 10,000 rupees to the consumer. So idea was within your sitting space or next to your headboard of your bed, you can place this device. So it will ensure that no dust settle around that five, six feet of radius. And two, it also uh, cleans and purify air which you are inhaling. And you typically spend most of your day's time on bed, which is one fixed location. Of course, rest of the time also, there are a lot of furniture, but then you keep changing your position. However, on bed, you sleep straight for six to eight hours in one specific location. So that's how uh, this, this uh, product concept was placed. But when we sat down to design it, we thought how we can bring the story of opening window and getting the fresh air inside. So that is stimulated through a little interaction in the product. So if you see the bottom left image and an image right top of it, so bottom left is switch off position. So this central disk, the white disk in the center remains static when it's off. But when you switch, in, switch it on, this disc used to move up and create an opening for fresh air to come out. That was our story of telling people that, look, this is like your opening of window and letting a cool, fresh air breeze coming in. Uh, of course, we also ensured that it's easy to clean in terms of maintenance, but that's how it was done. And then when this disc rises, there was a, a, a hidden lighting which used to glow indicating the status of purity of the air around you so yeah so uh, that was our way of putting stories and of course there would different contexts and different ways of putting stories but whenever you make product just don't limit to a to a nice shape but try and state a story out of it that's when uh, it becomes a lot more interesting and acceptable this brings to another point which is interpret inspiration as feeling so this storytelling is sort of linked with this parameter so uh, when you draw your mood board you should look at it from the feeling perspective and not from the form perspective so typically in in my practical life i i myself had had done this that we see a nice surface and we say our product will have this surface. And we would try and copy to bring that surface into our product proportion. But that turned out to be disastrous more than beneficial. So the idea is what that surface communicate to the consumer or what that overall form factor or design language communicates to the consumer at the emotive level needs to be taken as an inspiration uh, and not the image in itself. 
So uh, here was one uh, water purifier, the RO we were assigned to do, and this was a global project. So we had certain uh, parameters already established to also look at, take into account the aesthetics, uh, aesthetic preference of uh, other countries. And this was to be launched in Korea, China, Vietnam, and USA besides India. So there were five countries targeted from this design. And when we sat down and we were trying to brainstorm as to what should be the right uh, form direction we should take or what should be the design direction we should take, uh, we zeroed down on the feeling of delightful and serenity, which signifies purity and plus makes product usage a, a, a nice experience going forward. So we also did some product searches around it. So uh, the, the the design direction set was that we will create a monolithic form with a scoop, which perhaps is best explained in the image bottom left, that uh, that uh, home theater from uh, Sony. So that was taken as inspiration, but we didn't try and we didn't try to copy it. We interpreted uh, to maintain a very clean surface and a scoop thereby. But then. Uh, but the other parameter which comes into picture is not just to take inspiration, uh, draw, write, mood board, and not just to speak with consumer, but also to read between lines of your interaction with your closer group and outside consumer. This brings another key aspect of designing, which is reading between the lines. So you should interpret more than following word for its face value. So this was interesting project. Again, the picture on the left hand side, which you see are of bad resolution, but uh, from the document of rural uh, television study. So uh, what we understood that in rural India, women would be cooking in the kitchen and TV, uh, TV will typically be installed in drawing room and in some cases in bedroom. Now, uh, distance between television set and kitchen uh, spans at least one room in between because these houses are like uh, train. They are one room uh, and then second room and then third room or kitchen. So they are in, in, a, in a linear manner. So typically you will end up watching TV from a big distance. And this is also the segment which buys a smaller sized TV. So at that point in time, uh, 22 inch was the best selling size and 26 of this segment was actually a premium purchase. But again, 26 is also not a big size of the screen. So uh, what we also realized that these people do not have made support or a help, household help, and they would do most of household chores by themselves. So while cooking, the women would be watching their uh, cereals or uh, daily soaps because in the evening time, the remote will be uh, in authority of husband or children and they would be watching their own favorite program. And women typically ends up sacrificing watching those uh, daily soaps. So they would catch up uh, in the repeat telecast, which will happen from morning till uh, evening. And this is the time then when they will also be engaged in their household work. So they wanted to see television, enjoy and catch up with what, what has been missed. So at that point in time, uh, LG also had a bracket to install television. And this bracket was named as swivel bracket because this allowed you to adjust the direction of the screen uh, in the desired uh, direction. And this bracket was a bigger reason for TVs or LG to sell and market than the TV itself because it offered a sort of flexibility which many of the household were looking forward to. But the challenge was the sound. Now, uh, when you are watching TV, of course, you can see the images running, but to hear what has been spoken, you will have to really shoot the volume very high. So, uh, which might also come as a complaints from the neighbor. Some, some customer did mention that my neighbor comes and says, you are watching TV at a high volume, it disturbs us. So there were other unset parameters. Or within the house, if there is an exam 
uh, approaching a child would be studying you don't really have flexibility to shoot up volume very high so we thought that mobile had already been uh, has been available to this segment and fm radio of feature phone was also very famous so we thought of whether is, is it possible for tv to relay sound on fm frequency which can further be captured on their own personal mobile phone so thereby they won't require to buy another speaker extra cost and they can still remotely hear volume also without really having a need to push up so this was never stated by any consumer that they face this issue but there were pertinent uh, indicators of this pain point and because we could interpret it differently we could look at it differently and read between lines of our interaction between consumer with consumer we could come down to this solution and then there emerged one more insight uh, which again emerged as a latent need was that this segment has lot of uh, a uh, uh, practice of uh, sharing things so if you have a special dish you would typically go with a bowl full of dish to your neighbor or to your friend and you share food you spend evenings together it's more like a extended family so we started probing in this area that uh, will it be nice to share data they said it would be but then i cannot really hand over my usb drive or sd card to my neighbors they may end up losing it and it's costly so uh, we thought that since they do not have computer at home can we facilitate copying data from one usb drive to another pen drive or from one sd card to another sd card so that came forth as the second proposal so uh, yeah so lot of it was unsaid but when we evaluated this concept with the consumer they really loved it so yeah so uh, this again is in a way rooted with the previous thing which is uh, the latent need is something which creates the wow factor because consumer had not expected that there would be a solution of this order but you take that solution to them and to reach latent need uh, one on one interview often fails because uh, what they can speak is all about what they can imagine or they have seen but to come to this term becomes one another important skill which every designer should possess is to observe so in following slide there is one example very dirty looking pictures so on top if you see you will find a small uh, oh i have a laser pointer available so do you see this is small element uh, this is in kottayam kerala Uh, and we were visiting consumer houses and we in one of the houses we found the signal cable which is your dish antenna or your uh, dth cable that was also disengaged with the tv so we did observe this that uh, usually the power plugs are disengaged but this was the first time when we saw this uh, input uh, cable disengaged from tv so which is when we asked them ki ye kyon kara hai bhai aisa kyon hai ye alag nikal ke kyon rakha hai and they said we heard somewhere lightning happened extra voltage came from the cable and tv went off now this is a fear psychosis but it is there and this was rarely seen anywhere else so for this project we did uh, research northern india we went to eastern chatisgarh area we traveled down south in kerala and then karnataka so we had quite a healthy uh, sample size of home visits and that to distributed across india but this one pointer led us to conceptualize one solution which was uh, about uh, ensuring that tv will not go off no matter what kind of voltage comes into tv through power cable or through any other connection and we propose like you have mcbs at house which switches off automatically whenever there is surge in voltage or there is a short circuit or any uh, electrical issue 
so we uh, re-envisaged the the power button the switch on button of your tv as a safety button so anything untoward happens this button will trip off and will disconnect all power source and input signal source to your tv virtually uh, from a circuit breaker installed in between so uh, one observation of one house led to very interesting solution and when this was presented to the team in korea the ceo was very much uh, in agreement to this concept because uh, according to him uh, most of africa also face similar situation so yeah so one observation can actually give you a very interesting and very out of box solution to a problem so committing uh, to design early is some sort of uh, uh, connection with one statement which i made previously about uh, keep on exploring so typically what happens whenever one solution strikes and which we feel and maybe a couple of guys around us uh, also feel convinced about it we uh, straight away get on to 3d modeling software to start detailing the idea but that should be resisted uh, we should resist towards such sort of commitment towards design and we should allow some considerable time post finalization of the idea also to keep on exploring because uh, now you already have a foundation you are standing on a platform so there is nothing bad can happen you already have a good looking solution which is endorsed by by people around you but there is no harm committing another 3 4 days of exploration so that you can really stretch yourself to see whether there can be an alternative whether there can be another story which you can tell through your design so uh this was one project now again i do not have picture from its journey but trust me when the last data we made it was maybe 58th 3d model we did for this project so though the design was frozen over initially uh, the the display part which you see in the right picture was much smaller almost as small as that white circle which you see as a mosquito away so that was the size of uh, the display uh, in the initial concept to this concept was an inspiration taken from boomerang so if you see the the blade has a certain amount of continuity so the form factor is not a central hub and three fins of a ceiling fan but it is just three fins knitted together and for this transition of one blade to another blade we would have done at least 15 to 20 models to make it look as smooth as possible so uh, this was one area wherein we kept on exploring we kept on pushing we kept on pushing just to refine the surface level of this product so yeah it was a very interesting journey uh, unfortunately i do not have the process pictures available to me so that i could have shown it to you but just to give you an outline you see a softer transition and a sharper transition so all this sharper transition we are turning out to be very elliptical in nature and just to make it uh smoothly uh, transit to another wing was a big challenge plus the proportion of the central display area also eats up that nice bulbous uh, pot kind of hub in the center so uh, there was lot of refinement at a drawing level so we used to model it take full scale drawing sketch over the the drawing and go back again to the 3d modeling so so uh, it was big 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 transition uh, till we reach this point the uh, perhaps this would be one of the last few statements so validation and verification but more importantly discussion around your design option to conclude what would be the right direction to take ahead so often times it might so happen that you will evaluate your rendering or maybe mocks with a larger audience to see which one is like the most but 
I would encourage you to also have a healthy discussion as to why they like, why they dislike, and dislike is very important, as important as liking. And you deep dive into it. Uh, this will lead you to improve your design in the next stage. So, like this example uh, on the left, what you see is one of the largest selling frost-free refrigerators. This model was available in four capacities starting 240 till 320 liters. So when we were evaluating the mock-up of this design, and this design actually had won the Iskel Olympic Prize, which was LG internal prize for its global subsidy. The gold prize was awarded to this project uh, as a title of uh, best insight-driven design. So this had a lot of insights in this in this product, which was addressed for the first time in India market. So this was the first refrigerator to have a, a, a fixed box for your knowledge food because Haryana, Rajasthan are the places where women do not consume non-veg, but men do. And uh, women would often get uh, offended with uh, the sight of non-veg. So we tried to curtail that visible aspect yet give them the flexibility to store non-veg food. Uh, besides that, this was the first refrigerator to have a dedicated corner for cosmetics and medicine, which became a, a, a norm thereafter. So every competition had this. This also had a, a egg tray in which you can freeze your eyes. So people who don't consume egg can use it as an extra ice tray. So there were a lot of in, small, small interventions, but most of them came from the latent need of the consumer. But the one big difference was when we initially made mock-up, this small uh, pull-out drawer which you see above vegetable storage in which you can see the fruits are stored. Uh, this component I'm talking about. So this component was designed as a movable tray and we had given the flexibility to install it below any shelf you wish to do. And that is how the mock-up came. And we were very positive that this will work because consumer has got enormous amount of flexibility in defining the layout of their refrigerator. Interestingly, this was the least liked parameter when we evaluated this mockup because they said one, it looks, it makes low refrigerator look really cramped and out of space. Plus, they said, why will I shift it? I don't need. Uh, any uh, any requirement of shifting any container here and there unless uh, till you decide the right spacing and right location. So that's when when it went into development, we pull it down just above wedge basket to make it as one large wedge basket. And this this tray was convertible, so you can set it as a chiller tray or you can set it as a wedge tray. So that was the unique proposition with this feature. But yeah, we instead of making it movable, which also brought in a lot of technical complexity because temperature control was to be given on this, we made it a standard. And this just happened because consumer, we could discuss in detail about pros and cons of finalized design with consumer. Second point which came forth was that we do keep uh, cosmetics and medicine in refrigerator and it's nice to have a dedicated place. But this initial in mock-up was full transparent because we wanted um, the refrigerator to look very clean and open and, and glass-like, but they voted against it. They said, feature is good, but we don't want it transparent. We don't want others or uh, ourselves to keep on looking at medicine every now and then, every time we open the refrigerator. So that's when we did a very nice uh, pattern. Where, uh, there were small spheres on the surface, which created a sort of refraction and a lens effect. So you could see internals in a distorted way. Also, we applied etching in the area which, which didn't have those dimples. So it created a nice pattern. This you can see up here, the pattern detail. So, uh, and uh, it also uh, fed the need of uh, consumer to hide most of it, yet it gave enough glimpse to, to look at what is lying inside without really having to open it. 
so yeah so discussion actually help can help you refine your design solution to a larger extent so you do evaluate you do your verification and validation exercises but do deep dive into uh, the aspects of selection or rejection uh, the other story uh, this actually i am not sure as to how to it is but this was shared with me with one of the research agencies we had one evaluation project going on and the lead of that researcher was traveling with me so we were talking about it and they were the one to do the consumer study for the pulsar before it launched or before it was engineered this was uh, id mock up uh, in a sense so uh, the space was very uh, very submissive kind of design the there was some amount of aggression but not really to a very large extent and when they evaluated this bike pulsar uh, the outcome was that this design is least liked by consumer nobody liked it and the only parameter which was stated for it being disliked was that it is too aggressive for them so uh, as per this uh, research head the project head when they presented this case study to mr bajaj he said that is what we intended to do so if consumer is saying i am not liking it because it's too aggressive that is actually our direction to go off trend and create something very aggressive and they went ahead uh, developing this bike and uh, rest is history so it's perhaps one of the best selling bikes from bajaj so yeah so again discussion uh, you need not to read discussion on their face value but interpret what they are saying in the best possible way that might lead to a interesting selection of designs uh cosmetics uh, often time uh, industrial design is seen as a beautification exercise it's seen as as making a nice looking product of course it is but that's hygiene the content is the key the the soul of the product is the key the way you solve the problem you create delight for consumer that is the key you re reinterpret usability uh, to make it easier for the consumer is the key so content is the key cosmetics is yes of course being a design professional you will make something beautiful so uh, to cite an example of this we did this project and this project was done in two phase i have talked uh, a different aspect of this project before but this is in a very different context now so when we researched what people said especially in the places where water is salty it's a hard water uh, women usually would comment that they would like to wash their hairs with uh, some sort of filtered water because a uh, hair fall will go down with a uh, hard water the hair fall becomes much more aggressive so we interpreted that as a uh, uh, insight that maybe we can do a, a, a some sort of preliminary filtering and allow user to take that half filtered water for washing their utensils washing their hairs washing fruits and vegetable because ro water drain almost 70% of the water so it only retains 30% of pure water so it, it is a big damage to our resource of water so we thought of uh, curtailing this ro usage but give them uh, purified water good enough to be used for this peripheral uh, uses and when we evaluated this concept one other parameter came from internal stakeholder which was uh that now it's okay people want to save floor space they want a wall mountable uh, solution you have given a solution which can be kept on wall as well as on on counter but how do we service if it is installed on the wall we can't really take down the whole product so that's when we and this was when design was finalized so that's when we went back again to the drawing board and we cut open that front mouth of the filter and made all the filters within it accessible from front and this was done with a magnetic lock there were no snap on this cover it still does not have a snap i am not sure whether this is still in the market 
so this had a locator on the top and there was a magnetic lock at the bottom so you apply a little bit of force and pull the dhakkan it comes off and it had become such a delight for service guy that they could cut off their 70% of service time because this product is serviced very regularly every 3 month there will be a service personnel walking in your house to take up a, a full service of the product so this has also come as a immense delight later on so the idea is that form is of course there it looks beautiful but it also has certain content some meaning some weight to uh, it in terms of its solution for internal customer as well as outside customer uh and this perhaps would be the last if i am correct so uh, at the end i would say you should flavor your design with surprises uh surprises are the key to keep your customer or user engaged with your design solution so every time one interacts with your product uh, some new factor get revealed which surprise them which satisfy their need and that is when they can really bond together with your product and apple perhaps by and large has been very successfully doing this over the years so there are two example of course on the right is a um, uh, macbook from apple which had a magnetic lock uh, when i was using this they didn't have it anymore but in their previous generation they used to have a charger pen which was magnetically connected and uh, this is a true personal encounter of mine with this product so in lg we were not allowed to use uh, laptops we had a uh, work stations which were static devices but we used to get students for their diploma project there or maybe their thesis project so one of the students was carrying this macbook and once i was walking through and he was sitting on a coffee table in the center of the department and his charger was connected uh, the wire got entangled with my feet feet and i was so scared that laptop might have fallen down but no the the charging point was magnetically attached it is snapped off the product and uh, the product was completely safe and that delight or to cite an, another example uh, i had this opportunity to drive uh, bmw x1 uh, of one of my friends so when you put in the reverse gear of course you have all those sensor for guiding you to reverse your car but uh, the i don't know how do you call wo driver ke sath wala jo front seat hai that side of rear view mirror actually used to turn down 45 degree so that you can see edge of car in correlation with the road so these are the kind of uh, surprises you can create which unravels when you interact with the product or at a very surface level the images on the left which you see is actually a refrigerator uh, from samsung which is mirror finished so from a distance if you see it looks like mirror which is the leftmost image but image on the right of it uh, actually shows you the mysterious part of it it had golden uh, lines printed on it so from distance it appeared mirror but when you walk close you you will see further more detail which will keep you engaged with the product so uh, whenever you create design try and bring in some amount of surprise which will be as part of your detailing exercise or which can also be part of your color material finish intervention but every time a consumer interacts at least to a certain time they should figure out new solutions which should be surprising them and that's when your solution will become far more stronger and far more robust long lived uh right yeah this is the last one so sensitizing self uh, for people's choice so i do not have any case study of mine uh i would like to uh, uh, talk a little bit about a psychological case study so i did one uh, social psychology course online uh, crash course kind of thing so in that there was this case study of a monkey so uh, i don't know uh, perhaps it's called hanoff or hanoff i don't know i forgot the name 
but this guy has researched a lot on psychology of monkey and this was one of the experiments as to what monkey will choose so he had two mothers so here what you see is a monkey uh, feeding on to a feeding mother and next to it was a cuddling mother so this monkey was left in a closed environment and he can feed from this feeding mother and there is another cuddling mother with whom he can just go and cuddle with you will be amazed to know that practically if we see this guy this monkey should be spending more time with the feeding mother and they tried removing one of the mothers at a time to see the discomfort level of the monkey uh, the interesting aspect was when feeding mother was removed the monkey was still comfortable till the time uh, he really felt extremely hungry but when cuddling mother was removed he became impatient within 5 minutes so uh, uh, there are need which are uh, fulfilled but those need fulfillment is not really your engagement until you create that emotional bonding until you create those cuddling factor so yeah so this 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 study actually reflects a little bit on what would people perhaps will choose so they might be a rational to some extent but after a limit it is the emotive value which supersedes and on the right there is a picture of a lady named sheena younger she is a researcher and you can watch her on youtube or you can buy a book written by her named art of choosing so uh, she is purely researcher she has got nothing to do with design and she is blind with both the eyes so as per herself she has uh, ability to understand research without visual biases so it's a very interesting read and in that she has covered various case studies of uh, uh, different choices which people have made in different context it is a very interesting read the synopsis is a 40 minute video available on youtube so i won't talk about it but as my closing statement i would say do watch shina younger art of choosing and that brings me with my last statement to make your design a playful journey and let's have fun uh, on the right bottom is my phone so if you want to text me or speak to me sometime later you can just note it down and uh, yeah that is all from my side hello yeah. yes it was uh, uh, very uh, uh, insightful uh, mr pandit uh, all you know your uh, experiences from your real time experiences uh, and learnings from it with examples it was very uh, uh, i think uh, a lot of wisdom has come uh, through <laughs> you know and uh, points that we will remember because of examples and you know uh, yeah it was awesome uh, if uh, people have questions uh, people will have questions today so uh, feel free to ask questions guys and please turn on your video when you ask a question or have anything to discuss it's a weekend young guys may be planning for a drink in the evening <laughs> <laughs> hello yeah hi so this is anvika hi so so i was wondering uh, through your journey you've worked for i mean different fields like vip is a different segment of product altogether from appliances at lg and uh, uh, godrej so sir um, how i mean when we are young designers we sort of start to think at this stage that we have to decide which field we should go in but mm -hmm. uh, that's when you like different things it's very hard to choose 
so okay. um, i mean what what do you keep in mind when you are like you know uh, serving different industries and how do you keep on making that transition at any stage and not just decide right now okay uh, so i may not have the best answer available to me but look when i was studying i started uh, freelancing and then i established my company and in that company do we tried uh, offering design solution but we were ready to switch your house as well so that is the kind of that uh, and then i went on lg happened so our company went into loss we were in debt and we took on job so i really didn't choose lg to be very upfront and clear it just happened but uh, i think the best best answer i can give you is in initial days try and explore different direction or try and engage with the direction which which triggers your feeling with which you feel emotively connected and trust me uh, i have worked in top languages which is like knitting and stitching but trust me only one skill which works is the common thing otherwise design is all the same so product changes right. your detail changes but your approach to design always remains the same no matter what field you do so uh, trust yourself just take a leap leap of faith <laughs> and you can right thank you sir uh, hello sir yep so my question to you is uh, you mentioned during your talk that about you know making a lot of mock ups during the design phase uh, now i wanted to know you know what are the type of mock ups that you build uh, for a complex product like a refrigerator you know maybe there are some like just form mock up mock ups uh, you know, there could be mock ups related to just the technical aspect so like how what are the different types of mock ups and how do you make uh all these mock ups so uh typically uh, for a complex product or the product which has a huge amount of investment required uh we would often go into a, a multiple mock up so uh initial could be just thermocol uh, block mock ups and initially we used to do wire cutting but then cnc was also possible on thermocol or if we just want to study uh, the spaces we would do just a wooden mock up we will just um, uh, put nails through boards and make a rough mock up to understand the spaces and thereafter we would do the final design mock up now design mock up and test mock up are different design mock up will try and address all usability touch points and interactions with the product as well as the finishes and the kind of form factor it will have so typically it would look as your final product bearing the functionality so it will simulate the knobs movement of the knob press of button display of digit but everything is fake so that is the third level of mock up so first initially rough mock up uh, to see the form factor block mock up to see the space and the final design mock up and this mock up would often time be discussed with consumer to take their feedback and after this the data will be handed over to r&d and they would make their rpt mock ups to test the functionality of it and during the course of development there would be certain design changes which will be required so we used to support r&d in terms of those design changes keeping design intent in place so yeah so typically uh, in refrigerator case at least uh, two to three mock ups but maybe if project is critical it would go to five at times we would also do pu mock up a very quick uh, self made mock up not really a professional help just to understand the space and form factor so yeah so in terms of mock up that is the kind of intervention we used to have okay we And still have right right and you mentioned that you know uh, there can be certain design changes required once the data is sent to the you know research, like the development team now right 
uh, does it happen that you know to avoid these uh, challenges the development and and the design team are working together right from the start so that you know to avoid uh, changes towards the end so uh, that's a very interesting question and it has their own uh, its own benefit and drawback uh, typically we uh, didn't uh, partner with r and d till uh, the final mock up is made so uh, r and d did come during uh, uh, rendering time to give their technical feedback and at the time of mock up evaluation they would come and give their technical feedback but uh, we by far kept uh, r&d out of this exploratory method for one single reason that design uh, should not get influenced with the technicality and uh, in my course of working uh, there was not much change which was required there were only two in wherein uh, we had to look out of the box uh, this was once we designed a handle which connected with door uh, like a zero zero there was no top thickness available or uh, you have this plastic end cap sitting on the top of the door we did one design which had a dual finish uh, that part the plastic part both of them was in the same project and they were technical challenge so head of r and d refused it ki this won't be possible but to my luck there was a, a junior member in the r&d team who said i'll take this challenge and detail it out and he did and we launched it we made it and we launched it so uh, uh, everything is possible uh, so i would say uh, it's good to take their feedback but don't actively otherwise what will happen they will get shadowed by your creativity and you will get shadowed by their feasibility constraints and eventually both of you will not be able to do justice to your expertise so uh, that's how i would look at it i may be wrong but i have had my uh, i am pretty much okay with this construct of team working and it never pinches engineering comes down and says ki isme to undercut hai ye to release nahi hoga tool se we would mm -hmm. often time give them the solution or give them a rough idea with which they can crack the solution uh, problem and they did most of the time they did i don't recall changing design too much beyond mock up so even our product planning and marketing won't even realize there is some changes which has been done so yeah so by far uh, on that front i was little bit lucky i still am lucky my team here engineering team here in godrej is also uh, wonderful right thank you sir in ui case maybe uh, it would be interesting to partner as a active team member yeah any more question uh hari you are mute you are on mute ah uh, yeah sorry you have anything to discuss shobik or uh, ask questions to yeah i don't have a question as such but i just want to tell sir that uh, it has been ab 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 absolutely uh, amazing to hear you out it's been a really great talk and i loved every point that you made in this through your slides and your great examples and in simple terms so i didn't find a single jargon in what you spoke and i really loved that it was all in simple terms which i am sure our students would have uh, uh, learnt a great deal from that and it's uh, quite rare for us to hear the kind of insights and the kind of finer details that you shared with us so i re really want to thank you for uh, finding time and for kind of uh, coming here to share your uh, great insights with us it has been uh, really wonderful so thank you sir pleasure pleasure is all mine i enjoyed speaking yeah somebody has 
hand raised. Uh, yes, please, Risha, please ask. Yes. Uh, good evening. So, uh, what I recently thinking about was uh, saturation in consumer, consumer electronics field. So, right. most of the functional part and the reliable reliability part of the of these this sector is like quite mm -hmm. nicely placed and firmly placed. And it and what we are actually currently doing is fitting the products according to different contexts and uh, uh, like according to different needs like people might have by observation and by uh, picking out the points that the pain points they are feeling so right. according to you so the question is the according to you what could be the next big leap big step that could disrupt this field so uh, uh, look there uh, the life is like a cycle so uh, at time you become very rational then you become luxurious and when you are done with luxury you go back to rationality so, uh, uh, so uh, by far, and uh, we also have seen, I mean, I'm not sure about you, but I have definitely seen the era when phone wasn't there and then came the yes, pager and then came the mobile phone, teacher phone, those heavyweight half kg phones, and today's generation of phone, uh, iPad. So there has been big technological shift. So uh, in terms of form factor, I think, uh, people will go uh, more defensive. They won't really celebrate much. They'll keep it simple. But say simple, the bigger challenge uh, being as a product designer would be to do the proportions right. So simple, simple product are actually very difficult to do. Trust me, I've seen this. The more the simpler product is, the harder it is to execute and to design it yeah, correctly. Sir. But going forward, I, as people have been talking about UX experience, so uh, typically when you hear a word called UX, it's seen in context of a screen, but it has to be seen uh, from a, a bird eye point of view. So uh, I think the way you make uh, your consumer or your user interact with your solution will define most of it then a uh, broad cosmetic part of it. So uh, I think, how do I cite the example of it? The best part could be, let's see, uh, like Instagram. Instagram is all black and white app, all black and white app uh, for the fact that photographs are already too colorful. So if you would say that designer didn't have an opportunity to, to use color, that may not be appropriate, but designer had the ability to choose the most appropriate color. Similarly, I was seeing some award-winning entry of a fire extinguisher. So typically the fire extinguisher you see is painted red in color. And this guy didn't change the form factor. He didn't change a bit of it. He just changed the color from red to white, making this product a household product which you can install in your living room. So hypothesis is that if a product is in your house, you know what function it will serve. So you need not to highlight it but you can make it uh, much more harmonious with your interior. So I think going forward, we as designer uh, will, will be talking more soul point of view, uh, more stories than the uh, frills around product. So yeah, that's how I think it will evolve. So we will be engaged, but in a different way. Okay, sir. So basically and we'll be more into the story part of the product. Correct. And, and don't look at design as design. So I have had my share of healthy discussion with marketing, product planning guys from India, from Korea and from US. Uh, trust me, the way uh, you are taught design, you can think about marketing or planning a product like lineup for five years or define a product strategy. You are far more equipped. They would know certain jargon, few words, but at the skill level and understanding level, trust me, design allows you that kind of uh, empathy with your consumer and with your alignment with the market. You can really do wonders. So uh, it's 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 a wide world out there with different possibilities and scope. Yes, sir. And so uh, uh, one more question was, uh, what could be your advice for the young designers? I think I asked this question in the last talk as well. Mm -hmm. 
okay uh, so my advice is simple just play with design and have fun so you enjoy doing it huh? so don't yes. do it. So, so you know when when you do it as a duty or uh, as a compulsion or as a deliverable you would make three option and you will choose the best possible option but when you do it as your fun exercise it is like one extra game so every concept is that one little extra game one extra point and trust me that will take you longer than uh, otherwise so love your design play with it and in design you have lot many parameters to love love any one of them and commit yourself to it and you will have a wonderful professional life ahead yes sir so uh, we are uh, you actually said ki we should uh, have a specific focus on certain aspects of design right right uh, so uh, on contradictory to that uh, what i was thinking uh, as young designers we should be open minded to like different possibilities and aspects of design correct so, so how can we uh, what's your what's your opinion on that yeah so the first question was that only so i suggested that in your initial days you allow yourself a time that this is my exploratory time and this is the time when i would like to focus because if you keep on exploring then you will yes, end up knowing everything but you would you will still not specialize into something right you will not yes, have in depth knowledge of or understanding of something so in initial days allow yourself a time maybe 3 years maybe 5 years till you have other commitments coming in or till your uh, financial requirement goes really up till that time you explore you play around and then you you choose the direction which is closer to your heart which you really do love uh, doing you enjoy doing and then you can take a focused approach so it's again like uh, expanding narrowing expanding narrowing yes, but sir. your life is fixed and your timelines are fixed in project your life on earth is fixed so you will allow a certain timeline a project plan yes sir after which you will narrow down that's the thing and time is, you are the best judge when to take that course yes sir thank you sir thank you sir for, for the insights yeah if uh, and nobody has any other question uh, i would like to conclude this uh, talk with a uh, uh, thanks note again to mr pandit it was a amazing talk uh, very uh, i think very relevant uh, you know people asked also very relevant specific questions they always have doubts and a lot of things got resolved uh, in your examples that you showed uh, so it was wonderful and uh, i thank we uh, all, uh, you know on, on the behalf of the department and the institute we all thank you a lot for uh, sparing your time and giving us uh, all this knowledge thanks a lot yeah pleasure is all mine i really enjoyed talking to you guys so yes. feel free uh, if any of the students or anybody from faculty member want to talk in general to have a chit chat feel free i have already given the phone number in my last slide so i hope you might have noted but otherwise anyways you can figure it out it's a open world out there feel free to connect whenever you want to and it was wonderful talking to you guys yeah thank you thank you thank you thanks thank for you. the opportunity yeah thank you okay bye thank yeah. you sir bye bye, bye.